easily ignite people with just one concussive shot. It's gonna be a lot of slow. Sure, you do have Oracle in this lane, but I feel like the damage could be slightly higher than the amount of sustain that they have in it. And just Dispel. AoE Dispel coming out from the Brewmaster. I'm all about the Dispel right now because pretty much everything is Dispellable. Nullifier. This is like AoE Nullifier pretty much. Udger knee, concussive shot, fortunes, and a flame break to send 33 back towards the side of Gaming Gladiators. And that will be first blood for Quinn to start this one off. And one grenade thrown back over. <laughs> it's a war of grenades as Ace avoiding that illuminate and making sure that he's got enough life to survive the chase coming through from Tundra. And that's looking like pretty much all they've written on this little skirmish happening pre-horn. 33 could have get surge level one, but then your lane is really, really bad. <laughs> and it's better to die than to actually just survive there, go back and come back to the lane with surge. Kind of would kill what Darkseer wants to do. So I understand why he didn't do it. So getting the first blood. Quinn was the one who got it. So after picking up Bounty Runes, he should be very, very close to picking up Bottle immediately. Fortune's in with a blood right. That's going to land on to Ace, but again, not a lot more follow-up damage other than that. While Sox is going down at Araccio, you've got two kills here for Gaming Gladiators already. Great start for them. Brewmaster a bit low on HP, needs to bring some extra region. He already ate, I believe, two Tangos that have been shared. So it's going to eat another one. This mid matchup, we've seen it time and time again. Just Timbersaw against Voidspur, they're two really, really good heroes that kind of came up as soon as Voidspur became a must hero to be either picked or banned pretty much since he became universal. I do like Timbersaw, I do like Lone Druid a lot against them because you don't like possess a kill threat to this Timber, which makes his lane super easy. Nine has popped up a couple of times already in the DPC on his Timbersaw. But yeah, Voidspur definitely not going to be the hero that's going to take care of him. There's there's good counters to it because you're playing into Batrider, uh, heavy magical damage coming out from him and Sky, and also Brewmaster. If you feel like he's the problem, you can uh, cyclone him in, into the air or you can do it to Oracle. Really depends how the fights are going to go, but the Brewmaster really liking the pick. Now I want to see the laning stage. We'll see how that lane goes for the Brews. You can see Sox again chased here by Celery on this Batrider. Batrider taking a tumble into the five position. We've seen this hero in uh, a bunch of different spots. And in the five, how do you like it? A celery played it the other day. Huh? He was extremely good on it. Kind of became another core pretty much. Right. Becomes super tanky, drums, upgrades it to get Glimmer Cape. Almost impossible to kill. And yeah, already a good start here. In the stop lane for Gaming Gladiators, Tofu will drag the creep wave while also blocking the small camp. So, nicely done. Hey, you were it's talking like, about that concussive shot igniting the Cinder Brew, and that's exactly how they got that kill just a moment ago. And Flame Break, look at this. It's just constant aggression on the Soxa. Like, Celery's not giving it up, and he's burning Soxa away with that Firefly. It's not quite enough damage with how close he is to the tower, but still. Five position doing this kind of damage early on must feel really good. One thing I like about Dota, how we theory craft and move heroes from positions, is like you start with like, oh, that's a mid lane Batrider getting the priority. We've never seen like Batrider being played as position one. Then we shift it to position three. Still a good place for him. Then we'll, let's try him as position four. TP. Can he so TP boop. out? Oh, no. Oof. Level one in Purifying Flames with a right click from Skitter was enough to get that kill. Thought maybe he started the TP in time, but just a second too late. And in the end, to finish my thought, you end up with Hero being position five. I think same could, like you can say that about meta when we had like Brewmaster being played as position five, moved it from the off lane, moved it from the mid lane. And speaking of mid lane, Quinn doing extremely good. 18-4 against 11-1. This first blood that he got, He's getting a lot from it, this early bottle. Sure, he's putting pressure on Timbersaw, but then again, once he hits that level 3, it's pretty impossible to kill him unless you make a rotation. Nine does a really good job over on this Timbersaw mid, but it feels like a hero like Void Spirit in the hands of Quinn is going to control most, if not all, the power runes that are going to pop up in this uh, river. And that might be an issue. Fortune's end, and... Blood right down again. They go after Skitter for the moment, but not doing enough damage. That Cinder Brew does ignite. 
he's not working with a lot of mana here at about half his health. And also from the games that I've seen, when Nine plays Timbersaw in the mid lane, he doesn't tend to go for bottle, but he feels like in this particular matchup, I'm talking about player matchup rather than a hero matchup, I would say, he decided to go for it. The item build that he was going for was Vanguard, Mana Boots, disassemble it later on after you pick up Kaya Sanj, get to Octarine Core, lower the cooldowns on it, and win. <laughs> we'll be picking up that Water Rune. And it looks like nine goes for really nine. Get, yeah, he should get the other one. Nobody coming over towards mid, at least in the support aspect, to try and change this up a little bit. Flame Break, Surge away from 33. I believe Fury not going to do enough there to get 33 low or even close to dying off in that exchange. But you do see the jugs in top of the CS and 27 to Ford having a good time. Fortune Zen, Blood Right down again. A Blood Grenade thrown over to at least try and get a trade onto Snaking, at least through Ace. That healing but Lotus. not going to get it and he'll be able to survive. So just Tofu going down in this top lane while Skitter goes back to full health. He's putting some damage onto the brew. And honestly, this lane's kind of turning out all right for Tundra. Back to Pretty much. Nine's sitting relatively low. Ooh, vacuum back into the Illuminate. He's got the healing ward out. Not a lot of lockdown in this lane to make sure that they can hold on to this jug, but good damage there. Tundra doesn't have a single stun on their team, so that's going to be a bit of an issue, I would say, especially controlling hero like Juggernaut, one of right. the reasons why they decide to pick it. And Doracho should be fine in this bottom lane. He does have Cornucopia, plus... Appointed Healing Ward should have enough sustain. Cornucopia compared to like old Ring of Health is like even new Ring of Health is much more expensive, but it does also give you that damage and it also gives you mana region, so you don't necessarily need to pick up full perseverance now. We're placed down by Celerius. He's gonna head over towards mid to try and help control this first rune and Vanguard finished by 33, so his lane should get a little bit easier, and that's an illusion rune that it's picked up by Celery with nine coming over with some help here from Soxa. So Vanguard should help 33 because he's been, Jirachi has been using this level three Blade Fury to do quite a bit of damage here to this Dark Seer and constantly being forced to surge out of it and run away a little bit. He should be fine in this lane. Unless they make a rotation again while his surge on, is on cooldown. And TPF? Yeah, no. Real lockdown, he's gonna TP out, but the Tofu Ofu. will not be... Dying again. That's the third time he's died already. All three deaths for the side of Gaming Gladiators are through him. And Tundra, I mean, this lane looked a little bit dangerous when they were putting on the concussive shot in the Cinder Brew, but it, the damage output's just not enough here for Gaming Gladiators to feel safe enough. And this Skywrath's been up a bit too far a couple times. Sarya again, and Sarya. Are right, going for the XP oh. rune? Yeah, they want the XP rune. They want the XP from his dead, lifeless body. The neutral creeps will get the kill there. They do get the th wisdom rune on 33, so they don't steal the wisdom rune, and they don't even get the kill. The neutral doing the job. That's a little bit unfortunate. While Quinn chasing down nine and getting a kill here onto the timber saw. That's this the difference massive. in the build. That I said this time around, he does not have Vanguard, doesn't have that tankiness, instead has Arcane Boots, so that switch in the build that he decided to do kind of cost him the life. And you can see the difference already. 1k gold lead for Quinn without even like taking a tower, so that's massive. Yeah, and Quinn is, when he has a good start like this, I feel like he tends to just pop off and nobody's there to stop him. You see the double astral step. Quinn getting a kill there. A lot of damage early on. I mean, the biggest change for this Void Spirit, just, it feels like he does so much damage being a Universal Hero. Yeah. 10, 15 minutes into the game, you'll see this hero, like, sit at 150, 160 damage. Timber Chain misses, so will not be able to get the connection going. So the Shield Rune denied. I was having a conversation about that rune the other day. I, I feel like it's a With very... yourself? Yes. Um, it was what did the, the, <laughs> what did the other B cop say? Panelist me. <laughs> um, we were all talking about it, and I thought that as hold on. Yeah, all right, Firefly away, Chalk Room, thirty three vacuum back into the Chalk Room. There's the kill for thirty three. I, I think that room shouldn't spawn until fifteen minutes. That's what I was thinking. 
It's a really powerful rune. Yeah, if you pick that up 6, 8, 10 minutes into the game, you really are unkillable. Let's say your hero has first rupture. DP is available, but can't use it. Fortune Ends has been held by staking. Yeah, yeah. It, it just gives you extra at least 500 HP. So, pretty difficult to burst. Very limited amount of damage you have early on. Some stacks we've seen, Tundra, that they made... Celery tried to invade them, steal some of those stacks, but got only XP from the big camp. But now nine will start to work on those ancient creeps. The amount of stacks, more five stacks. extra on side of Tundra. So starting to kill these creeps, starting to get some net worth back under his belt, and he's still sitting about 800 behind Quinn, who is freely farming here over mid. And he's got some help if anybody shows up to the lane, and that might just be Soxa with Celery and Tofu here. Sox has got no mana, but the Aether Remnant doesn't land. They've got the Silence from the Ancient Seal. Fortune Zam purifying flames. Sox ends up dead to Quinn, who's now on a killing spree. But still, overall, 1k net worth lead for the side of uh, Undra. Little worried still for their ability to control these heroes. Duraccio, he used Omni Slash, didn't get the He's... kill, but might get it now. Oh, he might just get killed from the Ion Shell, though, so he has to walk away and activate that healing ward. They're still chasing 33. Celery trying to chase down this Darkseer. It's not so easy with that Vanguard, but eventually falling to Tofu. He was so tanky. Vanguard, magic one charges, a cold bracelet providing him with some extra magic resistance, but. Yeah, almost getting a double kill there. I was wondering what the item build on Brewmaster is going to be, because, like, sometimes you want to pick up Urn. I think in this game, I wouldn't even mind seeing a full Spirit Vessel, because you're playing into Timbersaw, Bloodseeker, like, even Oracle. But then again, Oracle can dispel it, so... Sometimes it can be tricky, but if you can't be the one, like, controlling him in the fights and also getting the Spirit Vassal after you kill Oracle, I think there's a lot of value to it. And, of course, synergy between that and Cinderbrew. But looking at Meteor Hammer, I think also a lot of value because you can bomb the towers. In terms of stuns, Stundra doesn't have any abilities other than Vacuum that can stop him from using that Meteor Hammer. And once that's on cooldown, you're pretty much free overall in Vacuum, at least... Level 1 has a massive cooldown on it, so... It feels like Ace is going to have a pretty interactive gameplay free time. Yeah, my favorite. What, Meteor Hammer? You just see your favorite item? Yeah, and Hand of Midas while you're jungling. Ah. These two items, whew, man, the amount of fun that I just have while watching it. Quinn, oh my god, already Echo Saber done, 11 minutes into the game, Power Treads, Bracer, and of course, Spark of Courage, same item that Duraccio is holding on to. You know, a lot of Spark of Courages. And by a lot, I mean at least those two. So, I mean, having him on the heroes that you want to have them is, a, is such a great feeling. An extra 18 damage is uh, really going to help the farming speed and the early aggression that I, I can kind of sense Game Gladiators want to go for. 140 damage already on this universal, lead-balanced Void Spirit. <laughs> Nine. Chakram, Timber Chaining, farming some of this ancient stack. All of the ancient stack, not some of them. And... The chase is on. Ooh, Ooh. didn't catch him. And the flame break pushes him back, but not really going to go any further than that. You can sense that gaming gladiators want to kind of get something done and work with this early net worth on Quinn, but missing their opportunity there. And the entire time, now Bloodseeker leads the net worth as that early Maelstrom with the phase boots finished. If you leave Bloodseeker off to a good start, this hero is going to stay on top of the net worth. It's insane how much farm you can get you get 150 attack speed with level 4 blood rage which is the ability that you want to max on max out and still didn't clear any of the stacks celery getting caught here mm, yeah 33 is around and omni slash was used wave fury but there's the rupture so they're gonna save this coddle draci is gonna be forced to tp out celery just going for couriers here meanwhile and he should be able to get Another? Oh no, getting baited a little bit by, and his courier might be in trouble too. Oh, down bottom, they've got Quinn in some trouble. Astral Step, 
Solar Mind, Skitter chasing, has that Maelstrom. Gotta remember, with a bit of help here, Aether Remnant connects, Ace comes over. Bloodseeker's so speedy, he's over. hasted. From the Batrider, yeah, he's moving so fast. Snaking ends up dropping. Quinn's still alive a little bit, but the Flame Break's not gonna help him out. Quinn ends up dead, and now Ace, who went into the Primal Split, he's gonna go over and try and find himself a kill on a Soxa. But pretty survivable on this Scott also. He's not gonna quite get that. And another Solar Bind, while well, now they drop the wall right on top of Ace, they hit the Illuminate. And oh yeah, Ace, give it that Meteor, hammer, nope. baby. <laughs> Vacuum and dead. And one thing that can stop it was off cooldown, and they ended up getting the kill and just getting away there is Celery through the Twin Gate. Caudal is super tanky, especially with this build, this Pavis that has not been dispelled by Blood, uh, by Brewmaster. And also Pickpole, he's been holding on to this and again, 1200 HP on Keeper of the Light, which is uh, pretty nice to think about. And the decent amount of armor, he has like 11 armor while underneath the tier one tower. Damn. So all of a sudden, Tundra, they got themselves a 3,000 net worth lead. And while well, Queen losing that killing spree, Astro step, blood right down, silence from Tofu. It's on to the Bloodseeker, but they are trying to chase. Look at the early damage, and it's going to be yet another kill here for the side of Tundra, who are really starting to bump up the pace. I love that we're seeing more of Bloodseeker being played as carry, because this hero joins early fights. Not just joins, Skitter has been part of 7 out of 8 kills so far. Uh, three of those coming in the laning phase when they were able to kill off the Skyrath that many times when the lanes were still kind of happening and existing. But everything's really slowed down for Gaming Gladiators. What's the game plan? How do you get back into this one? Suddenly, it's a 5k gold lead. Tundra, a team that you can't allow to farm for like a few minutes, you're going to feel the difference already. Now they're making a move. They already killed this tier 1 tower in the top lane. Nine feels relatively safe now with this freshly bought Vanguard. Has Kaya as well. He still did go for back for Vanguard because eventually we'll disassemble it and go into Octarine Core Celery. Trying to run. Snaking's also nearby. Aether on to 33 at the same time. He'll go into the Dissimulate and get some space between him and that Bloodseeker as well. But it, it does feel like Tundra's putting a good amount of pressure all over the map. I knew I was going to regret it saying that I was so happy about seeing Brewmaster being played. Again, still same issues with the hero. You're too reliant on Primal Split. If you don't have your ulti available, you do feel lackluster. What you bring to the table in a team fight when you have no ulti is very bad. Tofu, let's see if they can catch him one more time. Not quite. Also... They need to change the line instead of three of me. Now it has to say four of me. Yeah, yeah. that is correct. Till then, I don't think he'll win a game. Just based on that. So, 33 while he struggled early. Once he got that Vanguard, his game's kind of turned on quite a bit. He's got more net worth than Quinn at this point. He is drawing a lot of attention from the enemy team. They try to kill him couple of times already bringing in numbers and you can see him like forcing out some big spells astral step dissimulate oh boy mystic flare was dropped they go after the coddle again the aether and that lands on a 33 they they cool down now put out the omni slash but it doesn't do any damage so now queen alone by himself the blood rights down and they've got this split the cyclone onto the blood seeker as uh, so he'll be up into the air for a little bit, but now he'll start to be able to clean up onto these heroes, especially with a lot of them sitting low on the side of Game of Gladiators. He'll have a lot of speed. The attempt at a TP out, there's the vacuum back. Ace, now really not much place for him to go to. Tries to drop down the Meteor Hammer. It does land on a three. They get the kill on a Celery, so it ends up being two dead on the side of Game and Gladiators while Quinn does escape. This Omni Slash but, not really doing much. I mean, you don't... Th this is a fight where they didn't even use Oracle ulti. Darkseer again, 33 is super tanky with his Darkseer. And also, I said like big abilities and then mentioned Dissimulate and Astral Step. I, might, I know it might sound stupid, but if you force Void Spirit out of his comfort zone where he has only one Astral Step left, he's not going to go in aggressive. And that's exactly what they need to do. Protect these supports, lower the cooldown with some of their abilities with Chakra Magic. Most likely, it's just going to be Timbersaw in the fight. 
So you have like another Timber Chain, have more mana right now. Nine did finish off Kaya Sanj. And this is the item build that he did go for the other day where he feels like, oh, we need a little bit more control. So Blink Dagger, Hex Initiation. Baraccio, he's, uh, sorry, Skitter's not too afraid to pop this Rupture right on Void Spirit. And he's got that Manta. Quinn goes into the trees with a Assimilate, but now the attention's on the Tofu. They get the kill on a the Celery, they'll take out Tofu. Two heroes dead. One of them going down to nine, and Ace and Quinn are nearby. Aether Remnant just getting a grip on to Skitter. As Quinn, like you said, when he doesn't have a lot to dodge and duck dive and move around with, well, he's not going to be going towards the fight. He needs to be going away from it. He's trying to creep skip. Only does have the simulate available, but they're not going to chase him down. Tundra does have very limited amount of stuns. Yeah. Uh, which is none, by the way. But they do have vacuum. And this is why <laughs> Ace tried to TP out as Brewmaster. He's like, well, they probably used their only ability to control us in a team fight. But still, 33 had it available. He's been holding it quite often. You take a look, and now it is level 4 vacuum, so it is just a 30-second cooldown instead of that 60-second cooldown. Which is always nice. Taking a look at these items. Manta, we saw that earlier for Skidder. Using that map fight that happened near the Roche Pit in the bottom area, and he's going into the full Mjolnir. He's got 1,400 gold to do so. He's... Like, this Manta style makes him very tanky and also does have an ability to dispel some of these things. Share damage during Omni Slash as well. You know, I'm so glad that we're not seeing BKBs being built. First item anymore? On every single card. It's like, ah, here's our three BKB timing. We're going for it. Solar Roche being attempted by Duraccio. No TP for another second, but should be okay oh. here. Left that Tormentor low and then just now shard for Oracle. Thanks, Rachio. Yeah, thanks for doing all the work. Now we bless the reins of destiny. Good photo song. Oh, Celery manages to steal enemy XP rune. Very sneaky and also getting away from the trouble. Again, no stuns. It's like. Game and want to fight here, but kind of split. Like, Dorachio moves up real far forward. I don't know. I, I think sending two heroes like that against this Tundra lineup, very dangerous. Ace. Very interesting item choice in his quick buy, Radiance. Ooh. He feels like he needs to scale more, but then again, you are playing against Darks here, so you'll get that Radiance. Now, Radiance is disassemblable, so you can use it, get Nullifier later down the line. Ace. Get Heaven's Halberd. I was thinking about using the Vacuum, but then again, this is your only ability that can do something on side of time. I'm really impressed the way Tundra's playing, considering that they have Vacuum as their ability to TP cancel, and <laughs> in terms of control, they don't have much. Sure, like, there's Oracle, but Oracle's gonna stay very far away from a fight. Like, he's not gonna be getting close. They're still looking. And there's the vacuum. Celery. Going after him and getting that kill. And Sox will get credit for that one. As a trio or even most of the duos that you could create, create with this Tundra lineup, they do have the damage to take out most of these heroes on Gaming Gladiators at the moment. And they're up 8,000 net worth. So while doing so, they'll move over and go for Roche. And I, I, I truly just don't think this Gaming Gladiators are in a position where they can stop any of this. They cannot contest this Roche. There's way too much sustain. Guardian Greaves, Pipe, Pavis, the Spirit Vessel, Reigns of Destiny, anything from Oracle, pretty much. And Skeeter is going to be the one picking it up. This is a massive one. I do love this new Aghanim Scepter upgrade on Bloodseeker. I mean, it's not a new one, relatively new, but ever since the changes and the buffs to it, where you, like, enter the fight with extra 1,000 HP, Feels really nice from his shield. Hmm. The blood mist. Rupture. 
Celery. Losing a lot of blood. And... I, yeah, he's I, going yeah, for it. You're, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're not safe. St stairs or not. Skater was like, all right, tower, stairs, I don't care. This is an easy kill for me. Knows that he has Oracle behind him, so... <laughs> yeah. Even if there's any kind of threat. And gaming gladiators, they did really slow down. I think it also comes down to Tofu, who usually is like the big playmaker for the team. He had a really bad laning stage. And now Tundra, they're off to your high ground. Uh. Well, there they go. Start to take this tower. The glyph wears out. And Skidder's just going to stand here on the high ground. He's got some help. He had the Pabas on him for a moment. Astral stab Quinn. Ooh. Has to really jump out of there. I mean, this is... Team Gladiators have a lot to be froze concerned about with this high ground push coming in. Fortune's M back. You on five. Oh, into the wall. On the five, they've just bonked all their heads. They get the kill on the Tofu and Celery. Really, Gaming Gladiators, they don't have anything else anymore. Tundra feels so confident just taking whatever they want in this game. Rupture used and some damage onto the Bloodseeker, but you gotta remember, he still has this Aegis. The Meteor Hammer does land on a Skitter, but he is staying alive. I mean, considering that they don't have a single ability to set things up for this vacuum, this is <laughs> insanely this is impressive. impressive. Nice. Vacuum. Another one on four. Oh my god! It's just insane. Looking like a Dyson out there with those vacuums. Lasso comes through. It's on to nine. Trying to survive. Still alive. And throws the Chakram down. No way he gets away with this. They put the Pavis on him. And then the eighth remnant. He's still alive. You cannot take out this. Oh, the heals. You can't take out anybody. He's going to be back to almost full HP immediately. This Blood nullifier grenade at this is... point in the game. I don't know if that's going to do much of anything. Nine comes back into the fight. They've got the Blood right down. There's the vacuum again. Dude. It's just <laughs> Everybody, every time. 33, there's no stopping this man. They get that kill on a Tofu and Ace. They buy back on Tofu. They don't have it available on this Brewmaster. And these heroes are just sustaining on Tundra. They're not stopping. They want to continue to go. They've got Rupture again. And they're looking at Quinn. He's trying to fight back. Not much he can do. Alderaccio's down at half health. There's the Guardian Greaves once again. And the bottom set of racks are just going to be killed off. And, well, Tundra... They gained so much net worth, and they haven't lost anything for it. Pfft, how much heal do you want? Yes, like Bloodseeker has a oh. natural built-in heal, reactive armor, Pavis, uh, which does give them like an extra shield. Then you have Reigns of Destiny, Seeds of Serenity, Spirit Vessel, heals from Coddle, heals from Oracle, Glimmer K, like everything. How much healing is that? that these are some uh, insane numbers coming out from Snaking as well. Damn. Almost 20,000 healing. That's almost 50,000 if we... Yeah, that's 100,000 right there. <laughs> <laughs> One million healing. Oh, Snaking just God. broke a record. <laughs> uh, they, they, they just weren't scratching the surface. These heroes were getting kind of low. But Pavis and, and Guardian Greaves and, and these heals from the Coddle too. Like, it's just it's insane. Uh, this Reign of Destiny that they stole from Gaming Gladiators Omni coming in slash. clutch. With the lasso, vacuum back into the wall. Oh, God. Just sharked them. They'll get that kill on a Celery. They'll take out Tofu. They look over at Quinn. There's going to be a double kill for Skitter. Three heroes down on the side of Gaming Gladiators. And they want more. And, well, there used to be three had to take care of. Now there's going to be four. And they want to kill off every single bear. Usually it's rabbit season or duck season. Well, right now it's bear season. Solar bind on him, timber chain across, Ace just stops moving, and he'll be killed, as that's a fourth down on Gaming Gladiators. Make this hero great again. It feels like it's really lackluster, even with like having a decent game, and gaming, they have one fight left in the tank, that's it. They haven't managed to kill a single hero for a long period of time now. Tundra, full HP constantly, Aghanim Scepter now completed on Bloodseeker. It's gonna be so much damage, so much blood, plus Mjolnir on top of it. So, top set of racks. 
is not really being defended all too well. Yeah, Tundra playing like they didn't qualify to Bali Major already. <laughs> I mean, they are playing for DPC points. There's a big difference. Uh, there's yes. like between first and second place, extra 200 points. So definitely playing to win. And they're not messing around. 20k gold lead, gaming gladiators, they can't take a fight. Silence on a 33. There's the lasso with the immediate hex. They've got the false promise to get him out of the lasso. They take out Celery. And now Duraccio going to the back, but there's the wall down. Blood Mist all over Skidder. And 33 putting the Ion Shell on him. They get the kill on the Ace. They'll Timber Chain forward. And there's the Surge as that's an illusion from the wall. They get the kill there on the Duraccio. They'll call GG. And Tundra will take game number one with quite a bunch of ease here over Gaming Gladiators. Uh, very impressive from Tundra. Considering the start, they lose first blood like not.